The rest of the day and into the evening, we didn't do much more than go over the plan some more, tease Stardust a bit, and I found time to use the training room to fine-tune my expanding magic. We had dinner, which was very good. Apparently, Fairy Glitter wasn't just an intelligence officer, a master of espionage, and an interesting mom. She was also a very good cook. She also had a love for a drink she called a Manhattan. Apparently, it was both a city and a housewife's best friend, her words, not mine. It smelled like cherries and booze, and when I tasted it, it tasted nothing like it smelled. The faces I made when I tried it made Casquet fall off his chair, laughing. Now, it was an hour to midnight. Fairy decided to do my so-called message to the citizens the next morning. Fairy Glitter and Cascade had gone to bed after a long and loud talk in the living room. From what I could hear from the hiding spot I'd found in the deepest shadows of their hallway, Cascade hadn't been too happy with his wife and her lies over the years. While they had talked, I took some time to sneak into the room and grab something. Something I was now wondering if I wanted to use. I made a promise to not tell Stardust and Solstice, but from how the conversation had gone with their parents, it sounded like Cascade agreed with Fairy Glitter. I didn't plan on telling Stardust or Solstice, not for a long time, if at all. They were both too scared to find out how we'd react, and they wanted to tempt fate and hope my threat was an empty one. I guess Fairy Glitter really didn't know much about me. I don't make empty threats. So, once Fairy Glitter shut off the living room lights and headed towards their room, I went to Stardust's. I had made up my mind on the way to his room, and quietly snuck up to his bed. He was snoring loudly on a guest bed that looked a little small for him. I reached out and tried to shake him awake, but his hoof shot out and stopped mine as he flipped his head around, a glare of danger in his pink eyes. It took a moment for him to recognize me. When he did, he dropped his hoof with a sigh and sat up in bed. Ugh, damn it, Shadow. You shouldn't sneak up on me when I'm sleeping. I said in a whisper, Stardust, I was trying to do this quietly. Didn't want to wake everyone in the pony, uh, putting the house up. His tired and confused look changed to one of appreciation as he said carefully, Listen, Shadow, I know it's been a while since you've been with a stallion and all, and I know I'm <laughs> just that sexy, but I like some pony else. Plus, I see you like a little sister, and that'd be a little creepy. Also, I don't want to be castrated by Aura. His voice grew even quieter as he continued. She's fucking scary. Goddesses, you, I said, trying not to gag at the thought of doing anything sexual with Stardust, then continued with, First of all, you're not as sexy as you think you are. You're too tall. Your opinion of yourself is a big turnoff, and you act like a cult most of the time. Aura is way sexier than your goofy ass, even as a pony. Now, can you get your head out of the gutter so I can show you something, please? Didn't we just go over this? He asked with a goofy grin. Keep this up, and I'll tell Windthrasher you were hitting on me. I said, giving him a evil grin of my own. He sat up all serious-like saying in a much more mature tone, What'd you need to show me? I rolled my eyes as I headed towards the door. It's down this way, so turn on those weak sneak skills and follow me. No problem, Shorty, he said, following me out the door. That threat about me telling Windthrasher still stands. If you get us caught, I won't help you with telling her how you feel. I said quietly as I walked down the hall. He quieted down his voice a little as he said, I don't know what you're talking about. You like her, and you want to know what she thinks about you. I said just as quietly as we headed towards the hallway with the door to Fairy Glitter's office. I guess you picked up on that, huh? He asked. You did try to ask me about it while I was sneaking around the palisade, so yeah, don't worry about Wind Thrasher. I said. I mean, she's always been nice to me, and she does seem to follow me around like a puppy when we're working together. But I can't tell if she just thinks of me as a friend or if she wants to be something else, you know? He said. I stopped before the hallway and turned to look at him. Let me put it this way. 
You're one of the first Dalians she's met since she was locked in Stable 9 with a psychopathic doctor. You were the one who said uh, we should let her live when I broke the collar off of her. You have also never showed that you cared one bit about her form, so yeah, she's grown to like you ever since we saved her, uh, saved you from her, yourself. I'd say more, but this is a conversation you need to have with her, not with me. Just sit down with her and tell her how you feel. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. A sad look came on his face. I already tried that once, while you were recovering in the ministry. She stopped me, though, and said I shouldn't t keep talking, because whatever I was thinking or about to say wouldn't matter soon. Then she walked away, and I tried to stop her, asking what she meant, but all she said was, the monster is winning, and... I don't want you to see me when it does. That was that. And since then, she's barely spoken to me. Back when you were on the palisade, I didn't want to talk to you because I wanted to admit that I have feelings for Wind Thrasher. It was because I know I have them, and I'm scared that she's hiding how sick she really is from the rest of us. I want to find a way to save her before she goes completely insane. I raised an eyebrow at him. She seemed moody lately, but nothing like how she was when we were in Mill City. He sighed. You haven't seen how bad she's gotten, because she's trying to hide it from you. She knows that if you find out she's turning feral, you'll drop everything you're doing and try to save her. If it wasn't for the meds the doctor's been giving her to keep that her from losing it, she would have become a monster a couple weeks ago. But I don't know how much longer she can hold out. I don't want to see her become the wind thrasher you saw in your nightmare, the one you told us about. I sighed as I took that in before looking back at him. I haven't told anyone else the rest of my plan yet, and I still can't. But when this is over, I'm going to be going to Spitfire's Flight Academy for something. And while I'm there, I'll make sure we find her that cure. Don't lose hope in her, and remember that she does care for you. You might be the only pony that can save her from herself. She's pushing you away right now because she doesn't want to hurt you. You need to push back and make sure no matter what happens, you'll be there for her, okay? He nodded. Okay. Thank you. I smiled and hugged him. I'll always be here for you, Dusty. He hugged me back. And the same goes for me. Now, what do you want to show me? It's right down this way, I said as I led him to the office. It's an office that has a sign to tell Solstice to stay out. So what? He said, not looking impressed. Oh, shut up and follow me, I said, but before I could say anything, Solstice's voice echoed from down the hall. What are you two idiots doing at my mom's office? She asked, looking pissed. I knew she'd been following us ever since I went to Stardust's room to get him, but I hadn't expected her to yell down the hall. I put a hoof up, saying quietly, Solstice, please be quiet. I really don't want your mom or dad waking up. She walked closer, looking pissed, but she did lower the volume of her voice, saying, My mom's office is off limits, even to Dad. She keeps secrets from the Enclave in there. You need to go back to bed. We have an important mission in the morning. I know, and I've already been in there. Your mother showed me the room. She also told me something important, and she's hiding it from both of you. A secret that you both deserve to know, I said as I turned towards the door again, pulling out a key. I told you, you can't go in there, and where'd you get her key? She asked. Took it from her room while she was fighting with Cascade. Now, shut up and just trust me. You'll want to see this too. If what I have to show you doesn't convince you that I'm in the right, then you can go tell your mom I was being a bad little filly. Okay? I said as I opened the door. Once that was done, I lifted them both with my magic and pushed them inside before following and shutting the door behind us. Damn it, Shadow, you're gonna get me into so much... What the fuck? She started yelling until her eyes fell on the pictures all over the walls. I ignored her. My attention was on Stardust, who was looking at the picture with utter fear in his eyes. He took a single step back and let his gaze fall over them. After a moment, he looked back to Solstice and me, saying, Fairy Glitter? She's... She's... It's okay, you can say a Stardust. You're right. She's... I started to say. She's fucking stalking me! 
Okay, I mean, yeah, I know I'm a handsome stallion and all, and a good guy that any mayor would be happy to be with, but, you know, this is just plain creepy, yet also a little flattering now that I catch the eye of a lovely older mayor like her, but still, I'm not sure I can get back to sleep now that I know a stalker is sleeping a few rooms away from... He started to say, but I cut him off again. You idiot. She's not a stalker. Again, I was cut off this time by Solstice. She was looking at the picture of Stardust when he was first born. You're my brother. The one we were told died a little after you were born. Mom's been keeping an eye on you. Same for Doorstop. This time, Stardust's eyes went wide as a saucer. No way! How can we be related? We don't even look alike! I gave him a flat stare. Are you fucking kidding me? I should have seen it a long time ago, but I'm not a smart pony. But now that I look at you two, almost alike like twins, with only different coloring, hell, the two of you even have a similar personality. Pfft. Don't even look alike my ass. What, are you colorblind? But when I asked Doorstop if he knew my family was, he said he couldn't say. Stardust said. Yeah, because Fairy Glitter didn't want you finding her or Cascade. She figured that you didn't need them now, or that you'd be pissed that she knew where you were the whole time, and she never tried to get you out until you were older. I said. Honestly, I thought he'd be pissed too, but I wanted him to know. As I said before, I was done with hiding things from ponies I care about. To my shock, tears welled up in Stardust's eyes as he looked over at Solstice, who had a similar expression on her face. Quietly, he said, I have a family, a mom and a dad and a sister. I'm not alone. I always thought you died. Mom never told me what she named her cold. She only said he was killed when a sickness ran through the cloud cities, Solstice said. And even more shocking, the two of them hugged each other. Stardust and Solstice, the two Pegasus friends I had who bickered all the time, were hugging. Yep, and I thought Stardust and Aura becoming friends was impossible. Now this. I've seen everything. Who the hell is breaking into my wife's office? Cascade yelled as he barged into the room with a battle saddle ready to fire at the three of us. Fairy glitter right behind him. He stopped when he saw us, his mouth dropping open. Fairy Glitter face hoofed, saying, You couldn't give me time to do this myself, could you? I was listening in on your conversation, so no, I couldn't. You weren't going to tell them, so I did it for you. I said as I walked past them. You're welcome. Now go hug your son and get to know him. I'm going back to Solstice's room to get some sleep. You expect me to help you with Nightshade, yet you do this to me? Fairy Glitter said angrily, but she was cut off by Stardust who grabbed both her and Cascade in a tight embrace. I looked back at them and smiled by their looks of shock as he said through tears, All I've wanted since I could remember was to meet my parents. Back in the stable, we were told we could when we were finished with our training. When I found out that it was all a lie, I feared you were dead or you didn't want to do anything with me. Or maybe that you wouldn't believe who I was if I found you. I got better than I could have expected. You knew I was alive, and you sent my uncle to keep an eye on me. He screams, you know. <laughs> A lot. Fairy Glitter was crying, too. Same for Cascade, who I thought didn't have the ability to cry, as she said. You're not angry that I knew where you were and didn't try to rescue you? Why would I be mad about that? If you two tried, you would have died. You made the best of a bad situation. And I'm just happy that I found you. He said, pulling back and smiling wide. His face wet, yet happy. Let me reintroduce myself. I'm Stardust, and I'm your son. Damn right you are! Cascade said as he patted Stardust on the back. It's good to have you home, finally. It's good to know that you're still alive and well. Mom, you have to tell me the whole story. How did you know about this? Is this why you put Uncle Doorstop in the stable? Is that why Dr. Limbus was there? 
I have to know, and why you didn't tell me while I was traveling with my brother? Eh, he may be happy to meet you, but I'm still a little pissed, Solstice said. With another smile, I turned away from the family reunion. Glad that I could do something for my best friend, both of them. I found my way to Solstice's room, which was I was sharing with her at the moment. Even though this place probably had ten more rooms I could have used, but I felt better sleeping near a friend, and Fairy Glitter wouldn't let me sleep in Stardust's room. She said it was improper, though I didn't mind too much. Stardust could snore loud enough to wake the dead. As I found the right door and went inside and laid down on the other bed in the room, I noticed something glowing from my saddlebags. Picking them up with my magic, I pulled them close and reached inside to pull out a small crystal. It was the one the strange of my dad had made sure I got a while back. At the time, I had no idea what it was or why I was given it. But now as I looked closer and I saw the faint glow pulsing with green light, it was emitting I recognized it. It was the crystal that Flash Sentry had used to curse the Children of the Night. There was still a zebra glyph in the middle of it, and a crack ran down the center like in the memory orb I first saw it. Only now it was glowing? Why? Before I could get up to ask some pony, another crack appeared in the crystal, and a deep voice echoed throughout the room. All is one, and one is all. As goes the words for pony kind. The same goes for magic and the power around us all. This curse upon your family has been long and hard. You, Shadow Star, have started down the right path to break my curse over the families of the children of the night. You have brought together the descendants of your ancestors and their team, and fixed the bonds that were long ago broken by them. Aura Blood Talon and her sisters, Wingnut, Stardust, Solstice, and of course you are all the youngest generation of the first ponies and griffins to be cursed. The lines of Greta, Babseed, Cloudy Night, Lightning Dust, Minette, and Absent Moon, aka Night Stalker, have lived hard lives. Destroy the betrayer of their past and his line to fully break my curse. The voice vanished at the same time the light in the crystal went out, leaving it dull and lifeless again. I was shaking as what just happened fully hit me. The curse. The one the families of the children of the night had always said hovered over us like a sickness wasn't superstition. It was real. Even more, I knew who had to be the great betrayer of Night Stalker. It had to be Thunderlane. I was about to go tell my friends when a zebra's voice echoed out from the crystal next. It was old and feminine. Days of old and days of new. When the child of the new moon finds her true family, only then can the stars align, and the powers of the scythe points be freed. The red-eyed child will bring together the families of old and destroy the ones who started this curse. But this mare must be careful on her journey, because only the power of the stars and the soul of the new moon destroy the evil who rules the sky. I wanted to throw the crystal away, but it had one more surprise for me. It flashed like a memory orb, and to my utter shock, my magic connected to it, and the world around me melted away. Footnote. Level up. New perk added. Wolf. A sheep in wolf's clothing. Rank 3. While wearing faction-based armor or a disguise of any kind, you temporarily gain plus 1 to intelligence and plus 2 to charisma. You will sometimes come across unique dialogue opportunities while in disguise. 